In this video, I'm going to save the data from my inventory bag. And I had two videos where I made the inventory bag. Um, if you don't want to, I'll put the links in the descriptions for those two videos. But if you don't want to build the inventory bag, you just want to see how to save one off, um, go ahead and click on this. I'll put this in the description also. And then you're going to get my inventory bag game. I allowed copying. So if you hit these three dots and you hit this edit, it's going to bring up my game in your workspace and you can save it off as your game. So there we go. And here's my game. And I'll go ahead and open this up so you have some more room to see. It's a tiny little text. It's all right. I'll make that bigger. Don't worry. So here is my game. I'm going to play it just so you can see what we got. And here we go. We're in our we're in our game. We hit the tab button. It brings up this bag. When we go in here and collect stuff, it populates the bag. But when we leave the game, all this is going to disappear. Oh, also you can throw stuff out too. So if you don't want it anymore, you can throw your metal. All right. So let's go ahead and make this saveable. Let's stop this. And I'm going to make a new game so I don't mess this one up for you guys. I'm going to say publish to Roblox as. And I already have some that are similar to that. Let's go ahead and do inventory bag or inventory system three. So yeah, that's good. That's going to be savable. Saving data. There we go. Create. Good. All right. So the first thing we want to do, if we want to save data, Go to game settings, go to security, enable studio access to API services, right? If you don't do that, you're not going to be able to use the data store. See, so even says such as data stores, right? So save this. All right. So let's look at our game real quick. What we have here, if you're following along in server script service, we have this pickup manager, right? And replicated storage. We have our material materials, but we're not gonna have to use any of that for our game. I just, that's my wood, cloth and metal, right? We have a drop, a drop item remote event. So when we drop stuff, it'll, it'll make it disappear from the bag. We got the pickup RE, which will put stuff in the bag. And all of that is talking to this script right here under screen GUI. All right. So we bring that up. It's tiny. Let me make that bigger. And here is our. And I'm going to go through this a little bit. We're only going to have to change one thing on here, but it's not going to make sense until I go back to my pickup manager. Let's take, take a look at pickup manager. Here's my pickup manager. So when I, when I hit something in the scene, like if I go to pick something up, I do a pickup remote event. I fire to the client and then I specify the player. I want to add the item to their bag and I pass in the whole item. Right. And you don't really need to see what's over here. This is actually the item. Here, I'll make this smaller. This is the item count, right? Because we're storing everything in this table here for every player. And that's their item. That's actually the whole number of items. I'm going to make this item name because I was sending the whole item over to the client and then just using the name. That's a waste. So make this item name under pickup. All right. Once you do that, Let's go back to our screen GUI pickup loc. And here is our pickup RE, right? We're catching it. I defined it down at the bottom. So we're doing an on client event or we're connecting that event to this pickup bag. Let's look at that. So the pickup bag does not have the player specified. If you'll notice, we had three items in the last one. And we only have or three, uh, three variables, three arguments. We only have two here. But instead of sending the item, we decided to send the item name because all I'm using is the item name. So change that here to item name. Change it here to item name. And then we should be good. All right, so we're done with pickup loc, all right? I wanted to do that because when we start sending stuff over from the bag, I didn't want to have to modify that script too much. All right. So I said we're using data stores. So at the top of pickup manager and server script service, this one right here, make two variables, one 
for the data store service, game get service, data store service, and another variable for your data store. And it's going to be called get data store. And you can call this whatever you want my data. But it's got to be unique to your game. All right. Now we have our data store. This is what we're going to be using from here on out to save data. Let's go down. This is where we drop item. This is where we initialize our stuff. Let's save data first so we know what we're going to be getting. All right, so I'm going to say local function save player data player. Now I'm not going to wrap these in protected calls. I'm just going to make the call. If you want to look up protected calls, it gives you some protection if there is a communication error between you and, and the Roblox data store services. All right, but I'm going to live vicariously. And I'm going to say DS data store set a sync. I'm going to save it under the player's user ID. And I'm going to use this pickup data table that actually has a copy of all of your items for your for each player. All right, that's just going to save this off as a table. So that's cool. How do we call that? Well, game players player removing connect save player data now if everything works fine at the end of the game you're going to save off your data however if it doesn't work fine you're going to, you should probably like if your your brother kicks out the internet cable before you you leave gracefully um, you want to have like a save loop that just periodically goes through and saves like every 60 seconds so let's do that a save loop we'll say while the player exists do this is the player's gone we don't want the while loop going um let's wait and you want this to be about 60 seconds for your game but for testing we're going to do it for 10 just so that we don't have to wait that long to see if it works uh save player data and pass in the player let's just do a print saying in save loop just to make sure it's going cool so that will save our data off but we have to get it when we play again right so in init player data we initialize our table for that player everything is zero when it starts out let's change that let's go ahead and get the player data we'll say local data equals DS get a sync. All right. We'll need the player user ID, right? Because that's what we saved it off at, right? Player as uh, player user ID. So when we're getting the data, we're going to use that and then we're going to pass it back into this. Now, the player may not have played. So let's check to see if the data exists before we do anything with it. If the data didn't exist, then don't do anything. Don't populate the bag and stuff like that. So we'll say for i and v in pairs, because data is a table, do, and it's going to have this stuff in it, but it's going to have actually have numbers. Oh, look at that. Put a nest there. Uh, we'll say pick up data for the player will equal, oops, and i, so player, and then i, that's going to be cloth, wood, or metal. And V is going to be the number of elements you have. Now, if we have elements, we want it to show up in the bag. So we're going to say if V, which is the number of elements, is greater than zero, then uh, pick up RE, oops, pick up RE, fire client. That's going to be the client we're going to fire to. That's going to be the item, the wood, metal, or cloth. That's going to be the number of items we get. All right, that's cool. So now we'll get the data. And now let's start off our, whoops, our save loop with the player. So then we start saving away. All right, let's try it. And I think we got everything. Enter our game. 
and nothing. That's fine. We didn't expect anything. We just created it now. Let's go ahead and look at our output window to see if there's any errors. Oh, we're already in the save loop. But this is from the client. So in save loop, good, good, good. And let's get some fabric. There we go. Now remember, in your client, uh, in your Roblox Studio, when you leave the game, sometimes it does not communicate with the data store in time. So if you're troubleshooting and it doesn't get your last item or two, uh, it's because it didn't do that final save when you left. Let's, let's go ahead and leave. And now let's come back. Let's open up our tab. Uh, look at that. We got stuff. Now it's not gonna it nece it's not gonna necessarily populate in the same order that you put it in here, right? That would have just taken some extra, and it would have made the video too long. But you got all of your stuff. All right. So hopefully that worked out well for you, and I will see you in the next video.